Hello, I'm the new guy for. I uh, don't know why I picked that name. That was the first one that came to mind. The idea was that I think it'd become more ironic the longer I stayed on any particular site. It's a common theme that I have going. Anyway, I'm going to be playing uh, Sid Meier's Alien Crossfire, which is an expansion pack to uh, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. One of the better civilization games, in my opinion, which is already a, one of the better franchises of computer games. Um, anyway, I'm going to be playing this game and recording a few videos and you're perfectly welcome to watch, if you feel so inclined. Uh, <laughs> uh, who am I kidding? Um, anyway, uh, let me just describe what's going on. These screams should be vaguely familiar to anyone, anybody who has played anything even remotely resembling a civilization game of any kind. Things are selected such as map size, map type, difficulty level, rules, and finally, what faction or civilization to play as. Uh, for this game, I have selected the normal sized map of planet, which I'll explain later when I've got the time, difficulty level of librarian, which I'll explain later when I have the time, and rules as standard, including blind research, because it's how the game's supposed to be played, and arguably gives the game a nicer feel, in my humble opinion. Now, if it looked like I was dawdling over which faction to play, I wasn't. I was just summing up the pros and cons of each respective faction before deciding who cares. I certainly don't, and I'm the one has to play the damn thing. So I plumped for random, and anything that goes wrong beyond this point is entirely due to that fact. I tap my name out slowly, and with spaces, and... Oh, I won't know who you are until the game starts. So, until that time happens, the backstory of the game is essentially the reactor malfunctions on the ship that goes to Officer Centauri, forcing a crash landing. Simultaneously, in a monumental stroke of bad luck, as the bloke in charge of the overall colonization effort gets shot and everybody on board splits into seven factions, each of which is with their own ideology as to where the future of mankind lies. Look at them graphics! Whee! As it transpires, we are Morgan Industries. The Morganites to our friends, or indeed anybody who wants an adjective to describe us. And that's me in the corner, apparently. So essentially this faction is one big business conglomerate. It makes lots of money and likes any social engineering policies that help it make money. Their economic policies wouldn't look out of place in the 19th century, frankly. I don't know, maybe they even adopt the gold standard. $4.86 to the pound for the win. Uh, because this involves moving to free market economy, uh, we'll definitely end up falling out with the Gaians, probably with the Hive, uh, though we shouldn't have a problem with the peacekeepers or, or the university. Theoretically, although they can be quite tetchy. And if that last paragraph it meant little to you, keep watching, it'll all be explained. Probably. The biggest problem for us is the bottom bit there. Bases can only grow to size four before a hub complex, read aqueduct, uh, has to be built. Size four is tiny, and all because some people like their space. Sheesh. We can't force a population boom either. To the aspirational middle class that make up most of our population, 2.4 kids is plenty. So, with introductions out of the way, it's time to get on with the thankless task of colonising this barren planet. I built a defensive unit in Morgan Industries, a synth metal sentinel, before focusing my attention on scout patrols and colony pods until the entire continent is both explored and colonised. That little pop-up there that we all missed, that's the very crux of blind research. In most civilization games, you pick what you want to advance you want to discover next. In Sid Meier's Salt Alps and Tauri, you pick a general research goal to explore, discover, conquer or build. It picks a tech at random, which you only find out once you actually discover the thing. This, I suppose, is more generally more realistic. You can't predict what the technology of the future will be, apart from this game, it seems to be able to do that quite nicely. But what we can do is say what areas of, of development we really want to focus on, and what we want from the future. Now that there was a spore launcher, or one of planet's native life forms that spent the entire game trying to wipe you off the face of the planet. Mind worms are the native life form to really look out for, they'll actually actively seek out and destroy any units and attack any bases nearby. A very nasty form of attack, they induce terror in their victims using some unknown psychological attack, and while the victims are trapped in some personal agony, they then add real physical agony by planting their ravenous larvae into their still conscious victims' brains. But that's fine. I mean, we've all got a job to do, and their job is evidently to wipe out humanity. What I can't stand, though, are bloody spore launchers. Does that even make any sense? Whether they fire spores at units and then just damage them? I mean, how can you have a psychological spore? And it could also destroy improvements like roads. Why do they that psychologically? With a spore? And despite the fact that their only form of attack seems to be firing these psychological spores, they seem to do a very good job of fighting hand-to-hand, -hand, or gun-to-spore. 
Anyway, there's a game to play, so I suppose I better just kill this ball launcher and get on with it. Right, for so that rant out of the way, it's time for some good solid gameplay. No gimmicky graphics, no videos cropped from special wonder projects, and nothing but playing just a bit of exploring, building some colonies elsewhere, and spreading our business interests free of outside interference from anybody, or some tacky video graphics from somebody who has no idea what they're doing. Ah, well, we've got the guy on some channel 8, which begs the most fundamental question of all, why have we got 8 channels? Who are we talking to? I mean, even if I've met everybody, that's a total of 7 factions of which I can't talk to myself, so I need 6 channels there. Why 8? Anyway, back to the Gaians. What can you say about them? They're the eco-warriors of the game. The only people that have a greater understanding of the planets are the Cult of Planets, but they're an expansion pack one who won't appear in, in this game, because I find the new factions of the expansion pack off-putting and unbalancing, really. So their primary concern isn't making money, it's saving the planets, or at least studying planets and, and uh, not interfering with it. And too much. The planet isn't really that grateful, it still attacks them with mine worms as much as it attacks me. Well, perhaps not as much, but it still does. So, the part eco-warriors, part hippies, led by Lady Deirdre Sky. And here's the interesting thing. Look at, look at the biopic. Look, look where she's from. Free Scotland. Now, there's two inferences to make from that, uh, that statement. The first and obvious one is that at some point in the future, Scotland's got its referendum and is uh, independent of the Union. And second of all, free Scotland. I mean, I know they didn't join particularly willingly in 1707, being more bankrupted by a colonial expedition that went wrong and were in desperate need of money which the English could offer, but I wouldn't say they were oppressed by the English. <laughs> well, then again, Firaxis is an American company, and that is one thing that Americans share with Scots oh, and the the French UK. and Spanish, Spanish India, and the Germans, Pakistan, Burma, most of the rest of the, 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 the world. There's a healthy sense of Anglophobia, so that's all well and good. I hate to add, but in most cases, uh, this uh, Anglophobia is well deserved. Anyway, back to uh, Lady Deirdre. If you've ever listened to her speak, she sounds more English than I do. And after all that, which told you actually very little about the guy who's come to think of it. And perhaps Mark is down for some kind of, I don't know, persecution complex. We missed several key events. The most important of which is that somebody has discovered the secrets of the human mind. A nifty tech which in real life would have monumental and wide-reaching consequences, but in this game just seems to boost research. You, you get a free technology, you can actually relate them to, I don't know, the mind or psychology. Now, the peacekeepers have won at this time, which is odd because it's usually the university that discovers this kind of thing first, what with them being a faction completely dedicated to the pursuit of science. So the fact that they haven't discovered it, they're in a bit of trouble. I don't know what the peacekeepers are doing really well. Still considering the entirety of my foreign policy is just the guy, and so I can't help but feel that last 30 seconds or so was entirely irrelevant. And when we actually find the peacekeepers in the university, I find it completely wrong and I'm talking absolute nonsense. Now there you go, all sorts, sorts of weird and nifty things happen when you go into a, a unity pod. The equivalent is goody huts, I suppose. It's not just sort of a bit of gold. The technology, free units, barbarians. Weird shit happens, like units get cloned, or in this case, fall through dimensional gates and reappear somewhere completely different. As it transpires, the other end of Gaian territory. Now, uh, see, I'm trying here, like I tried earlier when I was busy ranting on about the guy and how Lady Deirdre sounds English. I tried to trade technologies, but... But I never want my technology, the snobs. Well, I'll take my gold and anything else I've got going, but never my technology. I can't help but feel that technology is better than, in the long run than when there's energy credits you're probably going to spend on... I don't know, a former or something. But she's evidently not interested and I've got no money to offer, so I think, well, to hell with that. Give me the damn tech. I've got a scout mover in your territory and I'm not afraid to use it to scout. I don't know. Not surprisingly, she sees through my feeble threats to worth bullying anybody. I just sort of slink away into the ether. Or in this case, the thumbs. And she does the game's equivalent to slamming the phone down on me. How rude. I won't even take my calls anymore. Bah, <laughs> look here. He who laughs last bites the hand of the dog that feeds it. Own guard a guy in city. Now, I don't usually play this aggressively. I'm, I'm one of those peaceful builders who just builds lots of bases and everyone else declares war on me I'm too powerful. But this is too much an opportunity to pass. So I try to get her to declare war on me. It's not happening, so... Despite not having any military tech whatsoever. And it's war.
that clip there was from the Marx Brothers film Duck Soup. So chosen because this up and coming will be about as serious as a Marx Brothers film and a lot less bloody. And that's not even much of an exaggeration. Seriously, I think that for as, as long as I've played it, which isn't much longer than this, the only thing I've done is just put two formers and a scout patrol, I think. Also, did you see that? I declare war on them, capture a city. They have the temerity to demand reparations from me. I'm clearly winning. In my opinion, they should be begging for mercy. But then again, I suppose I am biased. Now, some people, I don't know quite who, say you can't play aggressively as the Morganites. But I beg to differ against these these fictional people that I seem to have just made up. They're one of those useful factions because they make so much money. And money is power. In this game, anyway. Need to raise an army fast? Throw some money at it. Need perimeter defences and command centres? Throw some money. Finish off a special wonder project? Throw some money at it. It works, really, it does. The guys will have a devil of a time taking back the League of Valleys because they managed to throw some money at the place and hurry a garrison unit. I probably wouldn't have been able to afford it if I'd have been the, the Believers or the, the Spartans or the Hive, although I would have had better units to start with. Oh, come on, did you see that there? That, that mind worm just came out of nowhere and destroyed, no, obliterated my colony pod. See, that's why I have to build loads and loads and loads of the damn things. Still, credit to them, they make the barbarians, which, let's face it, that's what they are in just another guys, over the Civ games, look like wimps by comparison. In this game, you lose unit after unit after unit. So many formers, so many colony pods, so many military units. Sometimes even bases to the mind worms and spore launchers and sea lurks. Credit to them. They, they know how to make a mess of everything. Oh, for God's sake. Trust the guy instead of a bloody spore launcher. I've only got it because I managed to capture the damn thing. I think they attacked me with some mind worms in a minute as well. <sighs> Well, that's pretty good. Whatever you needed it, this wars as boring as wars get. I've just spent my time building a terraformer. Formers to the friends. They do nothing but build farms, forests, and roads, and are not usually the things you build in recently conquered cities. You know, no military for units, because I'm not able to build anything apart from scout patrols and synth metal garrisons. There was originally a joke here about uh, synth metal, the metal of the future, and synth metal, the genre of music. But in the interests of everybody, I decided to cut it. Anyway, looking at the bigger picture, we're all right apart from the mind worms. Some thanks to Planet, and some thanks to the bloody Gaians. I think I let the um, natural ones just, just attack my bases, but the Gaian one, just to be sure that they don't do too much damage, I attack them. And it's important to note, it's an important life lesson. If you ever encounter a mind worm in the course of your daily activities, always attack it rather than letting it attack you. You get a 3 to 2 advantage. More if you enlist passers by. Uh, well, this seems like as good a place as any to uh, call it a day. Largely because I'm well aware I'm reaching the 15 minute limit. I hope you enjoyed watching this and you carry on. I'd very much appreciate any suggestions for names for bases and natural landmarks, namely lakes, mountains, rivers, whatever takes your fancy. I thought I'd customise this game a little bit, being as it's something a little bit special. And uh, also, if you've got any gameplay tips and strategic insights feel free to share them or keep them to yourself i might not listen to them but the options are there nonetheless and i was going to leave you with a view of the world map zoomed out but i realized i'd be plagiarizing uh, uh, brysel's let's play civilization 2 test of time so what i'm going to do is give you a hand-drawn map of the world as we know it